Hello, this is Dr. Ken Gilman. This is my introduction to the website psychotropical.info, which has been my website for some 20 years or so now. I was pretty much in on the ground floor with this business. It started off being mainly education for doctors, but it's become more general. And now it's focused on education for everybody. It's free. The contents are entirely written by me. The only financial aid it has is by the donations that people such as yourselves make to the website to help with the costs and the objectives of the website. So what are the objectives of the website? Well, they're very important. Primarily, spreading accurate, objective information about drugs. Some people might not realise how important that is. It's important because such an enormous amount of the information that's available to doctors and everybody else about drugs and their supposed benefits is managed, and I use that word advisedly, very cleverly managed, by the people with the money. The people with the money are essentially the big pharmaceutical companies. They're answerable to their shareholders, their stockholders, not to the scientists that contribute information or the scientists that rely on the accuracy of that information. A lot of people in academia now take the view that much of academia has been almost taken over, certainly unduly influenced, by the sort of military-industrial complex. Almost all the universities in the Western world are funded or very strongly influenced by those sources of money. Let's not dwell on that too much, but it is very, very important for people to understand that here in this post-truth world that we all live in, if you like, these things are very, very important factors. And difficult as it may be, people have to try to develop the ability to distinguish good sources of objective information from other sources of less good information. Since my retirement, and I retired a little early, I may look a little young for my years, but uh, I'm still getting into my late 60s. Uh, I retired about 12 years ago because of my bad neck and my difficulty doing keyboard work. And since then, I've done more and more general reviewing academic research, having always had a research background from my earliest years in London. I came to Australia in 1983. So I've been here quite a while now, even if I don't sound too Australian. Eh? Um, so it's really important to understand that business about the lack of objectivity a lot of, of a lot of the information that's available. So that's the object of the website, is to provide that information. So, <coughs> excuse me, who am I and what's my credibility? I guess that's the key word. Well, that's easy to check. Uh, you can look at my publications uh, and something that a lot of doctors seem not to be all that clear about is the distinction between what's on my website uh, and what's in peer-reviewed scientific journals, the scientific papers that I've published. All of those are available to anybody to look at, either by looking at PubMed, which is a resource which anybody can look at for free, and that lists basically all of the publications in all significant scientific journals, an important
measure of the impact and importance of your work. Uh, and then in the top right hand side you'll see there's a measure called the H index which is calculated to give the overall impact of all of your publications. And just very briefly, a typical professor at a decent university has got an H index of something like 14 and approximately a thousand citations would be fairly typical. In other words, all the papers he's written, all total together, is a thousand citations. Uh, my H index is 26, uh, and my citation totals over 3,000 now. So that gives you an idea of, of the impact of, uh, of my work. The other thing I'd say that's a bit different about my uh, publications is they're almost all single author review papers. And of course, most people at university and such like setups, almost all their papers are collaborative papers with other people. Okay, so that enables you to get a bit of an idea of, uh, of the importance of people's work. And that's very relevant, clearly. It's not, it's not everything, but it's certainly very relevant. So that's who I am in terms of my uh, academic credibility. And that's helpful to understand because, look, I occasionally get uh, messages and I say letters, they're not letters anymore, emails. I occasionally get emails from people that say, who on earth are you to say that this is wrong and that's wrong and all the rest of it? Well, there's the answer because I've published a considerable number of highly significant review papers on these topics. When I say these topics, uh, what I'm referring to particularly is uh, serotonin toxicity, on which I'm regarded as a leading world expert, and also on monoamine oxidase inhibitor drugs, which are a very important but neglected group of antidepressant drugs. Uh, and I've published a number of review papers about those. They're all in my publications list in my Google Scholar profile and all the rest of it. Quite a lot of what I've published contradicts much of the supposed accepted wisdom uh, that's in many standard texts. And just a quick word about that too. Sadly, there's an old saying, I don't know who's familiar with George Bernard Shaw, but he said, those who can do and those who can't teach. Sorry, teachers. I enjoy teaching. I do a lot of teaching. But uh, it's, it's an old quote. But it does actually, unfortunately, have some truth in it. Uh, and sometimes you find that people who do things like write textbooks are actually not exactly first-rate academics and researchers. Um, the first-rate people tend to do original research and they're too busy doing that to uh, do book chapters. And of course, most of these activities for academics don't earn them any money. It may earn them kudos and promotion and stuff like that in the long term. Uh, but a lot of these activities don't earn any money. Uh, and they're really done often as much for uh, the good of the profession or the good of research generally as, uh, as anything else. So that's my website, and that's who I am. Now, what I want to go on and say in terms of introducing things is this. The donations to the website over the last 12 months or so have allowed me to take on a, a part-time assistant for a few hours a week. And that's a really big and important step forwards for me because of my disability it's pretty difficult for me to do an awful lot of keyboard work and that limits my output considerably. And then, besides that, there's the business of mastering all of the different uh, computer programs and, and techniques that are necessary to do all of these kinds of things well and effectively. I mean, we're talking YouTube, here we are. Um, and ResearchGate and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Twerp and Tweet and whatever it is, you know. Uh, and integrating all those into the website 
um, and making it easy for people to uh, see what's going on and understand everything. And that's really important. And may I say a few words about why I think that is really, really important. I touched for a moment on the business of the pharmaceutical companies and the massive amount of money they've got to influence the whole knowledge space of medicine and education and everything. And that is a very, very significant problem and factor. Don't forget that. It really is a very, very significant problem. And it means that doctors are almost entirely dependent, directly and, independent, uh, directly and indirectly, on information that's strongly influenced by drug companies for almost everything that they think they know. That is one of the main reasons that I do more now with my website than I do with scientific publications in peer-reviewed journals which are very time-consuming and tedious uh, and often don't really lead to uh, very much change. And I have come to the belief in the 10 years since I retired that the most important thing that's going to bring about change for the good in this whole psychopharmacology treatment area is the consumers, the punters, people out there demanding things from their doctor. It's so difficult to change the ingrained habits of doctors when so much of what they're exposed to is managed by the drug companies. So I think that the main hope for bringing about change is that patients and their families need to inform themselves and put pressure on doctors to change. Let me use this business of the monoamine oxidase inhibitor, the MAOI drugs that I'm an expert in. They have fallen into almost complete disuse all over the world and that is one of the biggest tragedies in the history of psychopharmacology because they are undoubtedly one of the most effective treatments that exist for people with severe depression. It's, you're almost lost for words talking about this because it is just such a, an extraordinary situation. The reason it's come about is to do with some of the things I've already mentioned and accidents and history and whatever. But the only way it's going to change is by consumers demanding change. So that is why I think it's so important for me to do what I can via my website to help bring about that change. An important question is what can you do to help and to improve the chances of people finding good information like the information on my website? And the answer is by spreading the word via whatever platforms and media you use. And uh, you'll see that thanks to the efforts of our new assistant, uh, we've got much more integration of that sort of thing on the website itself, so it's easy to uh, link up via the various different platforms that exist. So, even if you can't afford to make a donation to help the website, you can still help a lot by actively looking at the information on the website and spreading the word via the various platforms you use to anybody and everybody. That has a big impact on how Google prioritizes the information that's on the internet. Obviously the content is important too, but I'd like to think that's quite good. Uh, so the next most important Excuse me. Next most important thing is spreading the word. So that is what each individual person listening to this can do. So please do it. You'll be helping other people when you do that.
I give free advice over the internet, usually via Skype because it's much easier. I can't type long emails and things to people all over the world. And that allows me to say something useful about what's happening to various different people in terms of the health care they receive and the willingness of doctors to uh, you listening to this will know. Sadly, there are still a large proportion of doctors who will actually actively refuse to prescribe MAOIs. I think that's a little bit problematical. Obviously, doctors have a duty of care and they have a duty to be informed and up-to-date and knowledgeable about the current state of knowledge of all treatment. All the guidelines produced by the bodies that produce these kinds of things, you know, royal colleges and such like, societies of biological psychiatry and so on and so on, all recommend that MAIs are an effective treatment for severe depression, especially for so-called treatment-resistant depression. And yet, so many doctors will simply not prescribe them. It's an extraordinary paradox, and that is the paradox that we're trying to change. Okay, well, I think that will suffice for an introduction to the website uh, and I would just like to repeat again that all of you listening can do something to help spread the word by using the media at your disposal. So keep an eye on the website, there are going to be lots of changes and improvements and facilities and so on and so on and I shall be doing uh, more YouTube videos so that I can speak to some of the issues that are in more detail on the website but hopefully in a way which uh, will help more people understand more easily. So goodbye for now and I shall be posting more before too long.